Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Kai and today I have for you something a little bit different. It is a haul. Um, I recently acquired all of these new nail tools. So they are nail art related, but they aren't new polishes. It's a lamp, a drill, some drill bits, a mini curing lamp, and a dust collector. Some of this is PR, some of this I have purchased myself, so I figured I would go through and try out all these different things, give you kind of my opinions on them in case you were looking to really upgrade your lamp, your drill, or your dust collector. So yeah, thank you so much for being here and let's get into it. Let's go ahead and start with maybe the, the lamp. So let me move some of this. Okay, so recently I purchased this lamp. So this is not PR. This is not something that was sent to me. It's a little dusty because I've already been using it. Um, but this is the Cocoist LeBlanc lamp and it is a cordless LED UV lamp. It's rechargeable. It has all of these different features here for the different time lengths you can set the lamp to. So far, I'm really liking it. I've been using it for um, a couple weeks now at this point, and it's definitely an upgrade. I had looked into kind of like nail safety a little bit more recently because I had been using one of those $40 Amazon sun lamps and I never had a real issue with it fully curing. My gel always seemed to be fully cured at least. Granted, sometimes it would take a little bit longer than what the bottle said, but recently, as I've been getting more into nail art, as I have started doing these videos where I am doing tutorials on nail art, I, I want to make sure that any information that I'm putting out there it's always erring on the side of caution because when I got into nail art, this was, you know, 2020, COVID, 2019 even, and I started using gel products. There wasn't, I mean, I'm sure there was literature out there about the safety of using like nail lamps and using gel products and HEMA and all of that. But for me personally, I had mostly seen like videos from DIYers who were doing things at home or like short clips on, you know, Instagram, YouTube, whatnot, where safety wasn't like the main priority. And so I didn't do a ton of research at the start myself. It wasn't until it's kind of been trending more recently to do research on the products you're using, to make sure that whatever you're using is fully curing so that there's no risk of an allergy. Um, it's only been recently that those kinds of things have come out that I've started doing more intense research. That way, anything that I'm saying to you all, I can feel comfortable saying and ensuring that we're all just being as safe as possible, right? Because we all want to keep doing nails. We all want to ensure that we don't develop allergies, which would make it more difficult to do nails at home. So after that long uh, spiel, the point is I wasn't happy with a lamp that I had. It had been quite a few years anyway since I had purchased a new lamp. It was probably time for an upgrade anyway. So I did go with this. Now, this is expensive. I will be the first to say that. It was, I think, $2.98 from the Cocoist website. They do have a website that sells to the US and I believe some other retailers. If you go to their website, I'll have it linked below. They have a page on their website that allows you to search for retailers by your region. So depending on where you live, you can still find somebody who will sell their products. But I ordered it online. They didn't have any discounts going on, unfortunately, so I paid full price. But so far, I'm really happy with it. So let me talk about some of the features. So it is cordless, like I said. On the back here, you do have your um, plug-in. It does come with a power cord that is fitting for the US when I purchased it online. So I didn't need an adapter or anything, but you just plug it in here. It is supposed to fully charge within six to seven hours. And then you are supposed to have two hours of continual use out of this lamp. 
I'm not really on the go. I have one nail desk that I really work on, so I don't necessarily need two hours of continual unplugged usage, but it is nice if I want to move it from one side of my desk to the other and I don't want to have to finagle with the cord. So I do like the cordless feature. It has quite a few light modes here. First being that you actually have to turn it on. So to turn it on, you hold the 90 seconds button for two seconds. That's how you turn it on and off. I do appreciate that because there was one night where my old nail lamp, I woke up and it was just on for some reason. I don't know if like maybe my cat jumped on my desk and like stuck his paw in there or something, but there was it was very strange. And so I like that this one you have to actually turn on and off when you're using it, when you're not using it. So to turn it off, same thing, you just hold. And there's a little beep to let you know that it's on or off. So here's where you see your battery life in increments of 25%. So you get a good idea of how much you have left if you are on the go with it. It has a 10 second setting, a 30 second setting, a 60 second setting, and a 90 second setting. So the interesting thing about these settings are you set it prematurely and then the actual lamp is motion censored. So if I want a 10 second flash cure to affix charms, whatnot, you hit the 10 seconds, it's already set to that. And then when you stick your hand in, it turns on automatically and it will stay on for the 10 seconds. You can see the countdown here, which is also kind of nice so that you know how long you have left if you're an impatient person and you're waiting for that 90 seconds. So that's really cool. I actually really like that because sometimes I will be flash curing a lot of things. I want it consistently on 10 seconds. And that way I can just set it to 10 seconds, do my nails, whatever, stick them in and continually have it on that 10 second setting instead of having to take that second of like hitting the button on the back of the lamp, then putting your hand in. This is really useful if you are like trying to affix things and you need both hands to do that. So I do appreciate that. I do wish, and maybe this is me just being an idiot and maybe it does exist. I haven't really found if that's true or not though, I do wish there was not a timed setting and there was a way that you could just put your hand in right, leave it for as long as you want and then pull it out. Because sometimes I want maybe like a 20 second cure and I don't wanna go the full 30 seconds. Sure, you could leave it on the full 30 seconds and just pull your hand out when you're ready, but it is quite bright, I will say that. And with the way that my room is set up, my nail room, when I turn it on, it's facing towards me right now, but usually this light is um, aimed directly at my poor boyfriend's computer. <laughs> so I try not to like leave it on for extra time so I'm not uh, disturbing him. So that might just be a personal problem, but I do wish there was a setting where you could just stick your hand in and it would turn on. And then when you pull your hand out again, it would turn off. But that's just a little thing. They have a 30 second setting. So again, you set it to 30 seconds, hand in, hand out. You get the timer here. If you do want to turn it off prematurely, you can hit the button again. 60 seconds, and then they have a low heat 90 second mode. So with the 90 second mode, you click it, stick your hand in, and it flashes on and off. So I really like this. It's much better for doing like builder gels, anything thick that is going to polymerize really quickly because that polymerization process is going to create a lot of heat. It puts off, you know, a lot of energy. That's where you get heat spikes from. So that just ensures that you're not curing your gel too quickly if it's in a really thick layer and that way you're not getting those heat spikes. So I really appreciate that. So you can see inside here, lots of room. Let me show you. I can put my whole hand inside here pretty easily. It does have a removable bottom. So this you can remove cleaning, all those sorts of things. Oh, that's bright. Let me turn that off. <laughs> um, but you can see here, it has tons of lights. All the lights you could need. And that is because this lamp cures at two different frequencies simultaneously. So let me double check the info here to make sure I say this right. Okay, so it will cure 
at a wavelength of 365 nanometers and 490, sorry, and 405 nanometers. So that means that it cures both LED and UV gels. Some of the older gels, from my understanding, need a stronger light source or a different light wavelength to cure properly. So it's good that this lamp is a hybrid. It simultaneously cures both types of gels if you need it. And the fact that it has so many bolts in here means that you're definitely not going to be missing out on intensity. Let me compare this to my old sun lamp. So let me dig that out here. So this is my old sun lamp. As you can see, it has far fewer lights inside of it. Like if you compare this to this one here, you have far fewer lights and I know there's a lot of rhetoric I would say out there right now about LED versus UV. From my understanding, there's no difference in terms of risk of sun exposure, of cancer, in terms of which one is safer. I will link some other individuals who are much more qualified to talk about that in the description down below. So please don't feel like you have to take my word for it. Um, there are some people in the scientific community who have done research and talk about the difference between the two lights because I think there is um, a tendency to sometimes maybe go too far when it comes to safety in nail art products um, and there might be like some, some fear mongering in terms of trying to get people to not use certain products at all. I'm fully under the impression that everything can be used as long as you do your research and you know how to use it properly. Okay, maybe not everything, let me take that back, not everything, but most things can be used and can be used properly as long as you know what you're doing. So I had the sun lamp and it was fine, don't get me wrong. Um, it did what it needed to do. I've had it for a couple years now, it's time to upgrade anyway. But from my understanding, when you want a lamp, the things to look for are not just the wattage. The wattage could be a complete lie. What you really need to look for is the intensity of the light and the frequency of the light, the wavelength. So this one here, again, I said had both wavelength options in the lights to ensure that you're curing most of your gel products unless there's a gel product that specifically says in the instructions it needs a certain type of lamp to use. This one here, there isn't really much information on what kinds of wavelengths it emits, which I think makes it um, hard to recommend for me. I don't know that lamps are something necessarily that you want to cheap out on. And by cheap, I mean, I would say $30 is pretty cheap. Like this one goes for $30, $40 on Amazon. Once you get to like the $70, $80 range, that's when I would say you're probably getting into some higher quality lamps with better intensity, with the dual wavelength feature. Just make sure that you do your research and you check that it has the right wavelengths for your gel and that it is going to be at the right intensity. Wattage says nothing. Again, your wattage output is just like what it takes to power the lamp. It actually doesn't necessarily always correlate with how strong the lamp is. Let me show you the difference in um, what they look like. So here are these two. This is the sun lamp. This is the Blanc light, the Cocoist light. And I don't know if the camera is exactly picking it up. In real life, I'm not looking directly at this um, because this one is so, this one is so extremely bright. It is probably a good three times brighter than the sun lamp in person. Again, I'm not sure exactly how much the camera is picking it up, but it makes a significant difference in terms of just how bright it is. And that is going to be a large factor when it comes to determining how well it's curing. So that's what really sold me when I got this. I turned it on and I was blown away at the difference in terms of intensity. 
when it came to these two like i'm really happy with this i think personally it was worth the money if not just for the peace of mind to know that my gels are fully curing and that i'm not going to have any sort of seeping of uncured gel onto my nail beds because i do unfortunately have pretty sensitive skin i'm allergic to a lot of metals a lot of different things and so i have a feeling that my skin might be prone to irritation and i would absolutely hate to develop a gel allergy so i thought it was worth spending the money for peace of mind so i guess in keeping with the lamp thing i'll talk about the next product here and that is the Diami Pin Care Lamp. Here it is. And this is just a flash curing lamp. It's meant for if you're doing like gel X extensions, you need to hold the nail tip on and slide it under something to flash cure. It's meant for adhering charms if you're just trying to cure something really quickly to hold it in place. I was lucky enough to be sent this from Sweetie Nail Supply. So thank you so much to Sweetie Nail Supply for sending me a few of the products that I'll be talking about today. This one here is, I believe, a popular version of their Pin Cure Light. The Diami tip, I know, on their website, the canoe tips, the corn tips are also super duper popular. And I so far really enjoyed using this Pin Curing Light. Let me show you what it's like. So it is rechargeable, which I think is a big plus. I do have a couple other flash carrying lights and I'll, I'll kind of go over the differences between them in a minute, but this one is rechargeable, which I appreciate because I started with one of these and this is battery operated and it felt like it ate through the battery so incredibly quickly. Whereas this one, I can charge it and it's good to go. So this is supposed to charge fully in three hours and you get one full hour of use once you disconnect it which I think is pretty good for like a little light like this. I did read on the website just now that you wanna make sure you are only charging with the included cord and that you're not overdoing the wattage of the actual adapter. Um, all that information is online on the Sweetie Null Supply website, but it says that if you're using like a high speed charging cord or cable that it can potentially um, ruin the the battery in the light so just make sure you're not overdoing it but here's what it looks like it has this nice protective cap that you keep your light from breaking in case you drop it or something and it has a pink light which is cute i think it's mostly cosmetic i don't think it really makes a difference but the light itself is pink you can kind of see that here the little button to turn it on is just right on the back okay so I took a little break, um, boyfriend made tacos, so I don't remember exactly what I was saying, but I believe I was talking about the rechargeability and how this lamp works. So the button's back here, the little charging port is here. Like I mentioned, you do want to use the cord and the charging brick that comes with it and just make sure that you're not using too high of a wattage um, charging brick because it could affect potentially the battery in this. I do like that it comes with a cap. Just to give you a little bit of a comparison, this is my battery powered flash curing lamp. This is what that looks like in terms of brightness. And here's this one. I can clearly see on camera just how different in intensity these two are. I'm not even looking at them directly because you don't want to do that in the first place. You never wanna shine these lights directly into your eyes. But this one, is giving off what's basically a subtle glow in comparison to this one here. So yeah, this one is going to be much more powerful. It also comes with this cute little, whoops, let me show you. It comes with a cute little lanyard. So this is the box that it came in, by the way, the type C charging cables in there. I haven't needed to charge it yet since I got it actually which is why it's still in the box, but it comes with a cute little lanyard, which I thought was actually pretty clever. When you put on the cap, and this cap, by the way, is really secure. Like, I don't know if you heard that, it clicks when you actually put it on all the way. So you know that it's not going to come detached, but the lanyard hooks onto the cap, just like that. And then if you are somebody who is doing nails on the go, you are maybe doing some demonstrations at a convention or something, or you are just somebody 
who works in a salon and you're constantly moving around, you can just wear this, uncap it and use it right then and there. I just thought that was so handy um, and honestly quite cute and cool. To be fair, this is pretty expensive. Um, it is, I believe, $49 on the Sweetie Nail Supply website. So it is meant to be, again, one of those like higher end Korean nail products. But I would say if you have the money and you're looking for a really strong flash carrying lamp, definitely an option. It's super strong and it's also very concentrated. Like if you look at the area of effect here and how wide the light actually uh, expands, it's got this really nice funnel here that kind of takes all of the light and concentrates it. With this one, right, the light itself is pushed up right to the edge of the rim here, which means that it's going to disperse and you don't have that really clear concentrated area. Whereas this one, because the light is kind of like deep set into the lamp here, it funnels all that light into one concentrated area. You can see here very clearly where that light is shining, which does two things. It helps you not accidentally flash cure something else on your desk, maybe that's out, some uncured gel. And it also allows you to really concentrate that exactly where you want it to be. You could even like press it against whatever nail you're working on, again, to get better concentration of that light. So yeah, I would say if you have the money, it's worth it. If not, I'm sure there are some other affordable options out there for you. This is just one of those luxuries that if you can afford it, I would recommend. Now, they also sent the stand, whoops. So here is the flash curing stand. So if you did want to set up this little lamp as like a flash curing lamp for applying your Gel X nail tips, you get this stand here and it's a pretty basic setup. You have the base and this is full metal. I actually was so surprised at how heavy this thing is. It probably weighs at least a pound, maybe two, if I'm being honest, because this is fully metal. And then this gooseneck here, it does not feel cheap. It does not feel cheap at all. It is, um, very sturdy, like it's almost in some ways difficult to bend, which means it's not over time going to shift and move. You can position it exactly where you want it and it's going to stay there with no issues. It does attach with a ball bearing here, right here. So this has full range of motion in terms of twisting it whichever way you want it. So the stand is very, very sturdy. I was really surprised because it doesn't even need to be that sturdy for this. This is like not heavy at all, but I know that it is going to secure it properly. So you just clip it in like that. Then you can adjust it however you want it to be. Take off your cap. Then you have like a little, a little flash carrying stand. So now with it like this, you can put your nail tip on, hold it, stick your nail under, you know, let it sit, pull it away and you're good to go. So yeah, pretty pleased with this. I think the one thing I wish was a feature was, and I guess it's really hard to do with a, like a flash carrying lamp like this that's so small. I do wish that it was like motion censored somehow so that when you do like stick your nail under, it automatically turns on, but that's simple enough to fix. You just, you know, you turn it on beforehand attach your nail over here because it is so concentrated, you know that if you just move your hand over, it's not gonna get exposed and then slide it under the light. But yeah, that's the one thing. I just wish it were motion censored, but I don't know that that technology is really available for a lamp of this size. Now in comparison, um, I also recently got the Apre Karomi kit. I will be doing a full review of that but this is like another flash carrying type lamp. It is rechargeable. This one is more meant to be like on its own though. You expand it like this, got a little gooseneck that comes out and you can turn it on with the power button. This one too though, 
is not um, motion censored, like none of these little flash carrying lamps are. I just wanted to show you kind of like these two options because I know Apre is also a really popular brand. Um, I do appreciate that this one is so compact though. These are about the same price. I think the Apre one is $40, this one's $50. Um, in terms of intensity, here are the two together. I would say they're very similar intensities. So yeah, that's my comparison. This one is a lot more mobile, more compact. This one is meant to be more of like a, a desk staple, even though it is still pretty mobile, being rechargeable and all that. Um, it just depends on your usage. So the next thing that we can talk about is this. So this is a new drill from Melody Susie. It is for their anniversary. They were kind enough to reach out to me to send it to me to try. It is the S-Series SM200F nail drill. So, I really like the packaging. It's very luxe. It did have a sticker here that I ripped off because I did take a sneak peek. I can't help myself when I get a package. I always take a look, even if it's meant to be a surprise. But here's all what it comes with. You get the instruction manual here gives you all of the usage directions, that sort of thing, explains all of the different bits, because it does come with bits. And it gives you the warranty information. And here's the drill. So first thing, I love that it's pink. Um, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I like pink. I am a sucker for pink equipment. Here is the actual handle of the drill. It's quite hefty, I will say. It's, it's pretty weighty. But it is nice and small. It's not like too small to where it doesn't feel comfortable holding it, but it's not too large to where it feels bulky and uncomfortable. I Let me show you the drill that I've been using currently. Nobody judge me, please. I don't use a drill a ton because I mostly do press-ons right now. I used to do my own nails and do like Gel X and builder gel but now that i'm doing like nail content i haven't really been doing um like full nail application on myself because i would have to take it off almost every week to put on new sets to model for my videos and whatnot so i've been using this um like little handheld mccart cordless drill i think this was like 30 dollars maybe on amazon i got it five years ago four years ago when i first got into gel nails it has served me well i will say that but one thing i found pretty annoying was it's big like you can see here to hold it it's pretty bulky and not only that but like the handle's long so i feel like sometimes if i'm trying to hold it up here to get really good control the back end of it was always pulling down like this so it's not like weighted super well because it is battery powered. And so if I'm holding it the way that you would probably want to hold a drill up somewhat close to the tip, it always felt like it was ready to fall backwards and fall out of my hand really. So this one here, I will say feels a lot better. I can rest it like this. It's not really going anywhere. I don't feel it pulling backwards the same way that this one is. And so. This for me is a huge upgrade. Um, so thank you so much to Melody Susie for sending this to me to try. By the way, I forgot to mention, I do have discount codes for both Sweetie Nail Supply and Melody Susie. They will both be in the description. If you order things from them using that code, I do get a little bit of a kickback. So I really do appreciate everybody who's been using my Sweetie Nail Supply code and my other affiliate links. It really helps me create content for you all um, because unfortunately I don't make that much disposable income. So I really appreciate these companies that are willing to let creators try their brands, try their products because goodness knows I would not be able to afford to try all of the things that I do without both the brand and all of you who are supporting my channel. So um, honestly, Honestly, I just, I'm really grateful and I am so excited about the community that we've built. Also in the description, I have my Discord link if you would like to join. It's been a great time so far. Lots of 
members just engaging with each other. We like to share inspo pictures, product recommendations, that kind of thing. So if that's something that seems interesting, definitely check it out. So here is the actual body and battery pack portion of the drill. It is rechargeable. So let me dig out the battery pack and all the stuff in the bottom here. You do get quite a lot with this. You get the actual handle portion, the power supply, the cords, all of those kinds of things that you need. Here's the connector between the power supply and the drill itself. Let me go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so this plugs in there and then this plugs in here. If I'm being really, really, really nitpicky, um, my only recommendation for Melody Susie would be to have a black cord if possible, like a black one or even like a white one. I don't know. I am just not very partial to gray. It kind of, in my opinion, um, just dates it a little bit, the design, because this is such a gorgeous pink finish with the gold buttons, the gold um, outline on the side. I really like how that looks along with the nice shimmery pink material, the metal here on the drill itself and the gold accents. I just think this gray um, in some ways cheapens the look. So if there's any feedback I have on the aesthetics, it would only be maybe a black cord, simple as that, or a white one. But here's what this looks like. It does have a really nice display here so that you can see your RPMs and whatnot. Let's see, is this charged at all? Okay, so while that's charging a little bit, let me show you the other goodies that it came with. Got a little um, protector for the actual drill portion. It does come with a bunch of sanding bands. You get more sanding bands actually, and some drill bits. So you get a small barrel for surface work, a cone right here for cuticle work, polish the sidewall, oh, and under the nail. So this is meant for if you get a lot of product like under the nail here and you want to clean that up you get the cone there's a needle head for looks like the edges of the nail a safety bit for cuticle work large barrel for surface work backfill cutting shortening and fill cuticle so this one's going to be for right around your cuticle if you're doing a fill so you also get you, it looks like other bits. This one I believe is carbine and this one is probably, it looks like a ceramic bit. These are going to be mostly for like filing off the bulk of the nail, especially this one, cause that's pretty, um, pretty rough in terms of the texture there. So these are going to be for filing off bulk. If you are taking off like acrylic or thick gel, so those are the bands that you get. Now, at this point in time, I actually received this drill in August, actually late July. It doesn't release until when this video is out, which I believe is August 13th. So I, at the time of doing this voiceover, I'm not sure what the price is. I do know it's supposed to be professional grade. So it is, a drill that goes all the way up to 35,000 RPM. It looks like it's supposed to have 12 hours of battery life. Once you fully charged it, they say that they've upgraded the on off button. I actually have never used a Melody Susie drill before, so I can't say whether or not the on off button has been upgraded, but it does look very nice. They're also supposedly, um, increasing the compactness of their drills with this new model. It's supposed to be more lightweight than others. And I will say for the size, it does look very lightweight. Like this whole system here is really not that big at all. It's the size of my hand, honestly, both the power supply and the drill handle, the motor. I like that it has this little clip here on the back. So you could actually like stick it into your um, apron if you're wearing one, on your pants. 
um, if you are going to be bringing it around on the go. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so that's interesting. So there's an on off here. You can kind of see it there. You turn the knob to turn it on and then it has this pause button, which I really like so that you can turn it off and on. And then you adjust obviously like the speed here. So this is your RPMs, again, all the way to 35,000. I personally don't know when I would ever use 35,000. Typically, I really only go up to like maybe 4,000, 5,000 um, with like a sanding band for cuticle work, um, something really low like that. And then I maybe go up to, you know, like 15,000 for taking off the bulk of a nail with a, um, a higher grit or I guess a lower grit sanding band or one of those bulk reducer drill bits. So I don't know when you need to go up to 35,000, but it's nice to know that it does. That means it's got a lot of power behind it and it's going to be very consistent in terms of the power output at a lower number, like 11,000, like 15,000. It also comes with the forward and backward feature, which is really important for filing around either hand. You really always want file, at least I prefer filing, in the opposite direction of the way that the, the, the bit is spinning. I just think you get a little bit better control there. I don't really like going with the direction of the bit. You can, I know a lot of people like file in a back and forth motion, and I think that's fine for like sanding bands. I personally, especially like around the cuticle, I like going against the grain of the drill, the direction that the drill is actually spinning. And so I appreciate that it has a forward backward option. So yeah, overall, it's like a really nice, um, very compact drill. Let's go ahead and put it to the test actually. So these are two bits that I got from Sweetie Nail Supply. These are both from Yogo. I really like the Yogo brand. I have their Milk Jam, their 3D gel that I'm really enjoying using right now. And I also really like their top coats. Um, the zombie top and the zombie base coat are both really nice, thick consistency top and base coats. So I wanted to try these drill bits. This is the Mango Bit Pro, but this is supposed to be like an all-in-one bit. At the top of this bit, you have a really fine texture where this pattern in the um, the carbide is closer together. And this is meant to be for safe use around the cuticle area right here. As you go further down towards the back end of this bit, the spacing in the texture becomes wider and wider, which means more of a rough surface. And so the front here is meant to be safe for around the cuticle. The center is for like sidewalls and filing close to that cuticle, getting um, like the last layer of gel off. And then back towards the back end where it's roughest is really meant for just removing bulk. So I'm super excited to try this. Again, it's like an all-in-one where you have this um, really nice actually rounded tip to it too. Like I'm running my hand over it and it's not super rough at all. This rounded tip is supposed to keep you from like nicking yourself on accident if you are working around the cuticle area. So yeah, super excited to use this. The packaging is cute too. So you get like a little clear window to see the drill bit inside. This was not cheap, I will say. I think it's $40, but it is meant to be a professional grade bit, something that's going to last you quite some time. And I do appreciate the versatility so it is like three different drill bits in one almost so there's that one and then i also got this one here which is their cuticle bit so this one is not as expensive i think it was like 20 dollars or something i believe it's ceramic see here yep and this is just a really teeny tiny cuticle bit oh wow that is so small so this almost looks like it's not even textured at all. If you can see, it just has some straight edges on it. 
almost like um, the mandrel portion of a sanding band would be, but teeny tiny. And so it's meant to be safe for roughing up around the cuticles and removing your cuticles with. So I'm excited to try this too. I think I will go ahead and put this one in the drill here. I'm going to do some cuticle work on one of my nails. I will apply a coat of builder gel on the nail and then we will file it off and see how it performs. So the bits do come, I would say, well, not so much this one, but this one here has information on the back of the recommended RPMs. So this one says it's recommended for like 5,000 to 20,000. For this cuticle bit, I'm gonna take it real slow, turn it on here. And I will actually just start at 1,000, just see, see what it looks like here. Just gonna do, again, right around the cuticle here. Oh yeah, that feels super gentle. Oh, I like that. I do not feel like I'm doing any damage at all. It's super gentle. I have used cuticle bits before and I still am somewhat of, I would say, like a novice when it comes to using an e-file. Let me reverse it here so I can go the other way. I'm definitely no expert with an e-file. I'm not a licensed nail tech. I am just somebody who is an enthusiast who taught themselves at home. And so I have learned a lot about using a drill from people like Susie from Nail Career Education on YouTube. I've mostly done research online when it comes to using nail drills. And so when I started, I probably wasn't as careful as I should have been when it came to picking the right bits for using around, whoops, using around my skin and whatnot. So you can see, I just accidentally um, used like the tip of the bit and hit my, my nail and it barely made a mark. It's like the smallest of marks there. But back to my story. So I, I would not say I'm like an expert or anything at all. And I've definitely used the wrong bits before for around my cuticle. And you get sometimes like a, <laughs> you shouldn't, but if you're using the wrong bit, you might get like a burning sensation almost around your cuticle if you're going over it with a bit. And I'm not getting that at all with this one. It just feels, again, very nice and light. I'm not feeling really any sensation. I could probably turn this up just a little bit. Let's do two. And I can even go in here and clean up the actual dead skin here around my, my cuticle. And this feels very gentle. Again, I don't feel any sort of burning, which you definitely don't want, but I unfortunately have experienced before because I was not careful enough with what I was doing. This to me feels very safe. I'm not like stressed at all about using this, about accidentally nicking myself in any way. And the drill too, I'm not getting like any sort of jittering. Granted, I'm at a pretty low speed right now. I'm only at 2000, but no sort of shakiness, nothing like that. So there's my pinky finger. Cuticles pretty well and pushed back. I did not push that back at all beforehand. You can see I'm, I'm actually trying to grow out my cuticles right now to do um, like a demonstration <laughs> on um, applying Gel X. So I let them grow out over the last week. So they are there, but here's what it looks like after doing cleanup with that cuticle bit. This one is very gentle. In some ways, I almost would say 
Um, some people might be looking for something even more textured. In which case, if you are looking for something that is a bit more abrasive, this might not be the tip for you. Me personally, as somebody who is, again, self-taught, not a professional, not a nail tech, I actually really appreciate that this seems very beginner friendly for a cuticle bit and you're not going to accidentally hurt yourself by using something that's too abrasive. So I actually really like this and it worked great with this. So, so far, big fan. I do want to try this specialized pro bit though. For that, I'm going to need to apply some builder gel. So let me go ahead and do that and I will be right back. So I applied a really, really small layer of builder gel just to test out the drill bit. And that actually brings me to my next item to review. And that is this big thing. <laughs> this is the Loma Linda Dust Collector. And it's a really interesting concept because it has a water filter. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the filter itself. It is quite big, the dust collector that is. Um, you can get smaller dust collectors that are like about this size, but I believe it's this big because of the power it provides, but also because of the water filtration system. So let me show you what it looks like here. You have this opening here to access the sort of like filter here, this filter pad that catches um, a lot of the excess dust. And this I believe is just machine washable. You can throw it in. And then on either side, at the bottom here, you have these water tanks. So to access it, you just push the button down here and then you pull this forward. And this is the filtration system. So you can see here that it comes with a min and max fill line and either side is its own chamber. So these two are separate chambers for water. It does come with a measuring cup. So let me pull that out. Comes with a little measuring cup. You measure out, I believe it's supposed to be um, 30 milliliters per side, but we'll, we'll test that in a second. So you don't have to go have some sort of external measuring device. It comes with this and a cleaning brush, which I really appreciate. So in case you do need to clean off a section, an area, you have an included cleaning brush. It does, I will say, if you are in the US, it comes with a charging brick that looks like this. This is more standard of um, like Asian countries, maybe even the UK. So it comes with this charging brick. I did just have to pick up um, a charging brick that was fitted to US standard outlets and had a USB-C port. The nice thing is it is a fast charger. So it's 20 watts and it is a just a USB-C. So it's pretty universal in terms of like the cords that you can plug in. So all I did was get um, a new brick and the cord that it comes with is perfectly fine. Here again is all the motor portion. This is the filtration system. So let me go ahead and fill it up. I haven't used this yet, so this is actually a first look along with the drill. So I brought some water up to do this experiment. I'm gonna fill this little guy up. Let's start with, let's start with 30. Cause I think I read somewhere that 30 is the appropriate amount. So let me fill one side up, see if that's enough. Yep, so I just put 30 milliliters in either side. It filled it up to that max line and now it is good to go. Actually, sorry, 30 milliliters it looks like was the minimum line. I had it resting on this, so it was tilting it towards the measurement. You could probably do 40. I assume looking at this that 50 would be the max. So there's that. And then this cover just sits right on top of that. I think it's magnetized. Yeah, I think there are two magnets here because I was going to say there's no like latch or anything, but it snaps into place. So I think it's magnetized. 
All right, so now that I have this all set up, the power knob is in the back left here. Let me plug it in because like I said, it is not um, wireless, so you do need to plug it in. You might want to get an extension for this because the cord itself is pretty short. If you had your own cord that fit the right specifications, you could probably get away with um, using your own cord with this because it is pretty short. I would say it's like four feet maybe. So that's the only thing I would say is get your own cord if your setup is not directly next to a plug-in. Okay, so you click the side button to turn it on and then you twist the knob. Okay, so this is actually take two for me on the dust collector test. So I plugged the cord into the wrong adapter. I had to buy an adapter that had a USB-C um, port in it. So I had accidentally plugged the cord into the wrong adapter and it was not the right wattage. So when I turned the dust collector on, I noted, I was like, wow, that's so quiet. And then when I did the test, it wasn't really like picking up the dust as much as I thought it would. So I made an absolute mess with this chalk here, trying to test this for you guys. Um, and then I was like, something's wrong here. I know that D-Gel, because this is a D-Gel collab, would never put out a product that doesn't really work that well because I love their paints. And so I put the cord into the right adapter and lo and behold, it is much more powerful. So let me turn it on again. This is how loud it is. So it is quite loud, um, which I think that's pretty stereotypical of a dust collector. I don't know if you could hear me over that. It is quite loud, which is pretty typical of a dust collector. It's not common at all to find a dust collector that is going to be silent or quiet, um, but it's not like obnoxiously loud. Like my computer on a bad day, if the fan's going is probably about as loud as this one. It's definitely not obnoxiously loud, but it is quite loud. So I am going to voice over this section and show you the test. I picked up some chalk again, just so you can really see how well this dust collector works. So I will show you without a filter on it first, and then we'll try it with a filter on top. Okay, so now that I have the correct adapter plugged in, this dust collector worked really well. You can see it's just funneling all of that chalk dust directly into the collector tray. Now I tested this with chalk because I thought it would be easy to see and chalk is actually even lighter usually than acrylic dust or than the um, gel polish when it's ground down by a sanding bit. So I thought if the collector could gather the dust particles from chalk that it would do a good job with acrylic and gel too. Uh, the only thing is, I would not recommend it because of the mess. So much better. You can probably see there's just a tiny, teeny bit of fallout, but that's because honestly I was holding this chalk up way up here to test, which is a good, I don't know, like probably six inches above the dust collector because sometimes, you know, like I'm holding my hand up here to file. So I really wanted to test like how far away I could have um, the drill in order to still collect the dust. Um, this works great. Again, that first initial test, I messed up because I put it in and plugged it into the wrong adapter. But now that it's at full power, um, it works really well. I did wanna just test with a filter on it. So I do have these little, just like disposable filters um, from, I think it's the Zephyr dust collector. These are also on Sweetie Nail Supply. Um, I think it's like a pack of 50. So. I wanna try if and see if I put this on the dust collector, is it still going to work? Because this is not a filter that's made for this, um, but I wanna see if they're still compatible. So let me turn this back on and clean it up a little bit. I did stain my brush, my cleaning brush that came with it, which is unfortunate. Um, again, would not recommend the chalk test. It works really well in this instance for showing you guys just how well the dust collector works, but for your purposes, I would not recommend it because it stained my cleaning brush and it also stained the little sponge underneath. <laughs> um, I'll show you when I go to clean this out. So these filters are not made for this dust collector, which is why I'm having some trouble here getting it to lay down completely flat. Um, I didn't have a problem with the dust still collecting 
it all landed on the filter and it did keep the area a bit more clean, but it did affect the suction. Okay, so as you can probably see with the filter on, it definitely does decrease the suction power slightly. You do have more fallout. I almost want to test if I can put it under the little grid here. So let's try that. Let me turn it back on to make sure none of this goes anywhere. So let's see if I just put this in here. Will it still work? So that's definitely an option and it did collect the dust pretty well. It does obviously affect the suction. These filters too are pretty thick, I would say. Um, I would probably use these with that Zephyr dust collector and maybe not with the Loma Linda. The thing about this one, um, I did some more research when I was trying to find out why it wasn't working the first time, is you actually don't need any filters at all because there's no sort of filtration system on the inside that catches the dust particles. What's really nice is that it's water filtered. So let me go ahead and do just a test to show you the section and then I'll get into the water filtration. So let's see here. So I did that just now because I just wanted to show you the suction power. Even when I was like hitting this, like you can see now when I tap it, that the dust particles go everywhere. But when I had it on and I was tilting it up and I was tapping it, the dust particles were moving maybe slightly, but not enough to dislodge them to make them move anywhere. So suction on this is really good. Let me go ahead and turn it on, clean this up a little bit, and then I'll talk about how you clean the inside. Okay, next time I have a bright idea about using <laughs> chalk, I'm going to ignore that little voice in my head because unfortunately I think I have now stained some of this plastic. Ugh, at least it's on the inside under the grill. You probably won't be able to notice it. Except for this bit here. Oh, that's sad. Completely my fault though. Oh well. Okay, so let me talk about how you then clean this. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it for now. So this comes off and you can clean this, just rinse it under water, which is what I'm going to do. And then this portion also comes out, like we saw in the beginning. And this is actually where your, oh shoot. I'm an idiot. So <laughs> if you had water in here, so let me just, uh, you know, I went and cleaned this out between that first test and this test and I forgot to put the water back in. It's late at night and I totally flubbed that up. That's my fault. Um, hmm, whoops. This is a disaster. <laughs> this whole tryout has been quite the disaster. That's all my fault though. So the way that this filtration system works is it's not actually um, a filter that catches all of the dust. The dust gets like sucked up back in there and it goes through the fans and gets blown out into these containers here. And when you have water in them, which you always should, I messed up and I did not have water in them. The water then catches the dust and keeps it from aerosolizing again when you move it. So instead of having like one of those little filters that you have to change all the time, there's no filter needed for this. You just get the machine, you fill it with water and you're good to go. All of this you can rinse out, um, which I'm going to go do now before this blue stains it even more than it has. But yeah, um, let me go clean this out and I will come back with final thoughts. There we go. And we can give this a try. So let me turn this on. I'm gonna go to about, uh, let's, let's say 8,000. The recommendation was 
what, 5,000 to 20,000. So we'll start with 8,000. I'll get kind of around the cuticle area to start with. Ooh, okay, this bit works very well. Just a teeny tiny bit of pressure. So this drill bit works very well. Um, I probably would not recommend it if you are new. I don't necessarily want to test like how abrasive it would be um, on my skin, but maybe for the sake of the video. Okay, yep. I just, I just lightly grazed um, my cuticle with the edge, just, you know, for the sake of the video, for the sake of you all. Um, and it didn't really hurt. It's definitely not meant for cuticle cleanup or anything like that, but it didn't cut me or anything either. So that's nice to know. I do feel safer now going in around the cuticle with it. And it is taking off this builder gel with ease. So let me test the middle section for taking down some of this bulk. Yeah, that files it away pretty good too. Let me try the back end. Oh yeah, you can see that back end is really taking away the bulk quickly. Now, I, I did not um, buff my nail before doing this or apply any primer or anything. I really wanted to test out the drill without having to like commit to having gel on my nail. So it is coming off quite easily, I think partly because I didn't prep my nail, but I will say this drill combo bit combo is super nice to use i'm not getting any sort of like shakes any skipping on the nail surface and again i'm only at 8,000 rpm i don't have this very high at all and it's just taking it off super smoothly and not in a way that's making me feel uncomfortable. Sometimes um, <laughs> if you're new to doing like e-files or to using an e-file, there is a tendency to feel maybe like a little bit uncomfortable at the start and get a little bit nervous. I used to get that way for sure, um, but none of that with this at all. I basically have all the bulk off, and in some places I even have all of the gel polish off. Okay. Now here, I would, <laughs> I would not recommend to keep using this. I'm, I'm doing it for testing purposes but I probably would switch to like a, a sanding bit at this point with the amount of product I have left on my nail. But yeah, that was really easy to use. Okay, so after that very chaotic review, um, I am back for final thoughts and I definitely have some. So for the dust collector, I would say if you're in the market for a really nice dust collector, you don't mind shelling out, you know, a couple hundred dollars for one. I would definitely consider the Loma Linda. It is super awesome. I think that it does not need a secondary filter. You can use a filter on it if you would like, but it functions best for sure. With no filter, all you have to do is rinse out the unit at the end of your session um, and keep that little amount of water in it. I did really like the dust collector. I'm so grateful to have it because I do think prioritizing your health is important so even if you don't go with a Loma Linda I would definitely recommend if you don't have a dust collector right now and you're someone who does 
acrylic who is filing down a lot of gel that you get yourself some sort of dust collector or at least that you wear a mask when you're filing because we don't want to be breathing in all of that debris all of the um, nail dust and that way we can continue doing nail art for as long as possible so dust collector i think is a go again it's a luxury purchase something that you will invest in and keep for years on end so for me that one was good the pin care lamp i do really like again if you have the money i think it's a really nice strong bright pin carrying lamp if you don't have the money there are some budget friendly options out there but this is definitely really nice and worth the 50 dollars for me um the stand is super sturdy very heavy i do need to tighten the bottom these two came as two different pieces and i just i didn't have an allen wrench um or a uh a screwdriver to tighten the bottom with on hand um so i do need to tighten that i'm just being lazy but i do really like the little pin care lamp and you don't have to get the stand you could definitely just get the pin care lamp but if you would like to buy the diami branded stand it's available it's very strong it's handy because you just clip and unclip it so that is that the drill bit this one and the cuticle bit i really like the cuticle bit i think it's super gentle it did not give me any anxiety at all using it i was never fearing like going too close to my cuticle and cutting myself i still haven't fully removed all of this i'm just gonna buff off the rest but really like this cuticle bit i like this one too it took off the product so so easily in some ways that does make me <laughs> nervous as somebody who um uses an e-file occasionally but is definitely not a pro but i really like ignore the dust on this the fact that the tip of it is rounded a lot of these sort of like really textured drill bits um that have the capability of taking off the gel super quickly have a very sharp edge on the corner here that i've definitely nicked myself with before but this one here you can see because that edge is rounded it's not a sharp corner it's going to protect your cuticle if you do slip on accident and accidentally touch your skin i even tested it right i went over my cuticle a little bit and i don't even have like any irritation or anything so i also really like this one i would say this is probably more for like um, an intermediate to pro though somebody who is used to using an e-file who knows when they're getting pretty close to the nail bed and who will stop when they get so close as to not damage their natural nail by accidentally using like this part of the bit on their natural nail so i think this one here is super beginner friendly the cuticle bit and this one i would say is more for intermediate to advanced users but both are super nice i'm excited to continue using these and even though by the way even though this one looks plastic it's definitely not it's it's porcelain you can tell just by the weight of it and by the sound it makes it's it's porcelain not plastic and i suppose last but not least is the melody suzy drill super excited to have this it's a huge huge upgrade from um again my like little handheld mccart drill that i've been using for ages just because i don't file down my nails um too too much i hadn't invested yet in a really nice drill so i'm so grateful to be able to have this one i think it just works so smoothly like when i compare my experience using this to my experience with the little handheld one with a handheld one i didn't get very many rpms and so i always felt like my um e-file was skipping over my finger it wouldn't real smoothly it wouldn't file smoothly and so i was getting like the little bumps you know but with this one because it has such high rpm capabilities you can go over the nail really easily really smoothly i feel like i have a lot of control this part is super small and compact so it doesn't feel weird in your hand when you're using it super pretty design again the only feedback i have to change might be just um the cord color i think a nice black or even a white would look better than this gray just because i think the gray it reminds me of like old school phones <laughs> um, like wired house landlines so yeah that is my review my thoughts 
on all of these products here please um, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments i'm happy to help let me know if you have a favorite drill if you have a favorite pin carrying lamp down in the comments below check out my discord link i'd love to have you all join so we can talk nails recommendations whatnot thank you so much to everybody who uses my discount codes i do really appreciate it again the ones for melody Susie and sweetie nail supply will be linked below i don't have a a cocoist code for the nail lamp i don't know that many people will have cocoist codes because i was looking for one trust me i wanted to save i don't think they do ba codes though so maybe wait for a sale for that one because i do really like my lamp my main curing lamp um but yeah thank you so much again for watching i hope you all have a great rest of your day wherever you are and i will see you next time bye